Okay, agents or workflows, why not both? Uh, thank you, Alex, for the nice intro. Um, uh, like, like he said, I used to be the uh, founder of uh, co-founder of Gatsby. Um, I wrote a book called Principles of AI Agents, which is floating around. Hopefully, many of you have gotten a copy. We, we have more around the conference. Uh, there was a big debate uh, a couple of months ago, which the terminally on Twitter people may have noticed, um, which I just referenced. Um, and I think like this is a big reason why. I'm ha why we're having this talk, why we're having this track. Um, this is going to be kind of like a reverse mullet talk or something like that. It's like party in the front, business in the back or something. So we're going to start with the party or the debate or, or whatever this is. Um, this was referenced in the last talk as well. Anthropic wrote a great uh, blog post in December. Um, it was called Building Effective Agents. It had great diagrams. It showed what an agent was. Can we close the door, please? Um, it, it showed uh, like some workflow examples. Um, like different sort of types of routing and orchestration. It was a great blog post. Um, in April, OpenAI also released a paper. I think there was some controversy about that on Twitter because I think some of the points people made was like, look, this isn't a lot of new material. Um, other people pointed out this kind of call out at the end, which is basically like an anti workflow blast. It's like, hey, like, and, and, and I think people were like, hey, yo, what's going on here? This is just like not accurate, and it's coming from a big model provider, so it's kind of muddying the water. So was, there was a lot of uh, controversy around that. That, that was the uh, Swix blog post I was referencing. Uh, the emergency blog post um, went out on latent space. Uh, I have a couple hot takes on that, and then I have a takeaway. I promise both the hot takes and the takeaway are relevant to the systems you're building. Um, we care a lot about this. This is the reason we wrote a, we wrote a book. Um, First hot take is like, look, just this. I'm gonna add open AI here, but it's like, just don't be that guy. Um, and I'll, I'll explain like the context of the like. I mean, I think we know this meme, but like, the, what I mean by that guy in this context. So th that guy just thinks that like they and they alone like know the only right way to do development. Um, sometimes and like we, I actually ran into Lori Voss in the hallway yesterday, and we started talking about that guy that we sort of had known from the last decade, um, but sometimes that guy works for this, for like a Fang style company and they're in like a public facing role and then the rest of us are just really in for it. Um, because like if you sort of look at the last decade, a lot of web devs got these like lectures by not all Googlers, but like certain Googlers about like the right way to use the platform. Um, and it was just, you know, again, I'm gonna go w really deep. I don't know how deep into web dev like folks are, but like it was just sort of a this code anti React code word, and it was kind of like they were sort of pushing these technologies that were not very easy to use. And instead, um, I'm just kind of hoping like the 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 model providers right kind of have this like elevated position in the ecosystem. So whatever they say carries a lot of weight, um, similar to like the the thing companies in in like you know web dev and 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 in, in general. So like let's just here's here's to hoping for a good quality of a discourse this time around. Um, here's a hot no take number two, and I'm going to add link chain here. Um, we should consider uh, like graph, node, and edge term APIs within frameworks harmful. Um, and and like I say this as someone at, who used to be a co-founder of a React meta framework that famously used GraphQL as a default way of fetching data. We wrote that we, we wrote our data fetching queries like this. Um, it was really cool in 2017. Um, we, GraphQL is still cool, right? GraphQL is a great technology. But we indexed on, on this pattern and it became kind of the default way of fetching data in Gatsby. Um, some of our users loved this, but many of them didn't. Many of them just wanted a React meta framework. Okay, why is he talking about like the last decade of web development? I'll, you'll see why. They ended up using other frameworks instead. Um, and when I see APIs that look something like this, it gives me flashbacks. I do not think you should need to learn graph theory to write workflows, to build production applications. More problematically, you should also probably not need your, like, all of your team to, to, to graph theory. 
a more grokkable pattern like looks something like this. And I've used like I've used master workflows um, here, um, but it, it's sort of like a fluent syntax. You can like clearly see the control flow. Um, but I mean, like this is like the ingest workflow syntax. Um, you can you can kind of clearly see the the flow of, of of the code. You can see what happens and then what happens after that and what happens after that. You can just see it by like when you sort of like step you, you, when you're reading the code, your your eyes can go from the top to the bottom and okay, I, I see what's going on here. Great, I get it. Right? It's readable code. It's 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 like a readable way of doing things. Um, I think when if we have to use nodes and edges and connect things, we lose that readability of code, which is really important when we're building, we all build software in teams, right, generally? Um, uh, uh, so, so uh, I mentioned this earlier, right? Like you and your colleagues should be able to use a workflow framework or whatever without learning graph theory. Um, again, like I said, it's a reverse, reverse mullet, like party in the front, hot takes in the front, like business in the back. Um, okay, so so like now that we've kind of like talked about like we, we've sort of like opined on the discourse of the day, um, let's get down to business. Okay, um, <laughs> design patterns for agents and workflows. And when I say design patterns, like this phrase has kind of a storied history. So this is a book which came out I think like late '70s by this guy named Christopher Alexander. Um, it was very famous. It spawned a bunch of like uh, not he, so. Okay, Christopher Alexander was a Professor at Berkeley, um, he was an architect. He sort of um, cataloged in both uh, sort of uh, like urban planning as well as like internal sort of like in, in building architecture. Like these are a couple hundred of the patterns of what we see are the right ways of building, um, and um, just wrote them all up in a book. Um, and so. Um, all the architects were not very fond of this, but like software engineers loved it, and sort of it became all the rage in like the, this predates me, but like the late 80s, early 90s, sometime around then. Um, uh, and so, so I think there's like, I think what we do not yet have, um, we have sort of like steps towards this, but what we do not yet have is a commonly accepted verbiage and, and like language and glossary of, of what are agentic patterns. Right? Um, what are agentic workflow patterns? Um, and so, um, okay, let's just start with like what are agents and workflows. Um, maybe I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the slide because I think the pre previous speaker talked about this. I was honestly, because people have covered this ground, these guys did a, a workshop yesterday and they did a great job. So I just like took their slides and put them in, put them in here. Props to Nick and Zach if they're in the room somewhere. Uh, but uh, they're, um, they're, they did a workshop on Monster yesterday, which is amazing. Um, okay, um, so, but like, okay, like, let's just, like, how would we explain it to a friend? So, okay, I, I think about agents like a turn based game, right? Like, I take a turn, then the agent takes a turn, then I take a turn, and then the agent takes a turn, and then the agent takes another turn, maybe it makes like a tool call or something, right? It's like back and forth. Um, and then I think about like workflows are like this rules engine for your, uh, for your tech tree, right? Okay, we got to. I, I played Civ a lot when I was a kid. Um, I, 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 you got to discover bronze working before you can research iron working, right? You got to get metallurgy before you can uh, research gunpowder, right? Like there's there's some sort of dependency chain here, um, and it's important to kind of track the dependencies because you can't do step B until you do step A. I mean, a lot of workflows are these like data pipelines: step A, step B, step C, step D, step E. Execute them all in order. Go, right? Um, you know, um, conversations have threads. You can have memory. Like these are all the emergent properties that happen when you think about uh, when you think about like lots and lots and lots of messages. Um, similarly, if you think about these sort of like um, dependencies, you, you can think about branching and parallelism and conditions and loops and suspending and resuming and replaying and all this fun stuff. Like those are sort of the emergent properties of of workflows. Uh, and I mean, just kind of recapping, like workflows have been around for a while, obviously. They're becoming more popular now for a variety of reasons, but one of them just, and I want to bring this back here because it's important, right? Like you can always just write um, you know, code that says do A and then do B and do C and do D. Um, but the reason why they, like, they're just more popular in AI engineering than sort of like normal engineering is because like non-determinism is, is sort of core to, <laughs> core to what we're doing here. <laughs> And and we and being able to kind of trace it and figure out what happened is like, 
if it's important in, in, in software engineering, it's 10x as important as in, in AI engineering. Um, so um, let's see. Uh, look, at the end of the day, it's just a trade-off, right? Um, you, you can have power or you can have control. You can decide which parts you want power on, which parts you want control on. You can start with power, and then anything that like, goes off the rails, you can add control. Um, at the end of the day, like many things we do, it's just a trade-off. Um, uh, this slide was, uh, was not able to drop in, but uh, the photo I wanted to drop in. But um, uh, we, we, you know, we, we've done a lot of whiteboarding sessions with like, hey, I'm starting to build an agent, and uh, I, I want to think, I'm trying to figure out how to think about this. Or my agent is, I'm feeding in this giant PDF of medical documentation, and I'm, not, I'm trying to diagnose 12 symptoms, and I'm, they're not, it's not accurately pulling out the right information. Um, okay, have you considered breaking that one LLM call into 12 LLM calls, right? A lot of what you do in these kinds of sessions is you sort of think about, you kind of ask, hey, what part of your application is performing not very well in, in terms of reliability, and then like how could you add some structure to the process here so you, could, you, you can get additional reliability? Um, and, and I encourage that sort of like practice we could have encouraged that practice, like obviously we're happy to do that with whoever, but like also just like do it with each other and like just try explaining your architecture to your friend or your colleague, right? And then like diagram it out on a board because you can match, when you're doing these things like magically, like you realize that uh, actually there's a better way of doing a certain thing and maybe a more creative way of using the primitives together. Um, coming to that, right? So here's just some thoughts, right? Agents and workflow composition. So agents have tools, and you know they they can call tools. You know workflows have steps. An agent can be a step. A workflow can be a tool. An agent can be a tool. A workflow can be a step. And like most primitives, the magic happens when you combine these things together. Um, the agent supervisor model. You have an agent that is calling other agents as tools, right? So. Um, Let's see, we have, th this one was a research agent and a summary agent and then like an orchestrator agent. Like, these are like, these, these are all like Mostra, um, sort of like Mostra code is just more of like an example of like, you know, but, but I think like it's illustrative, not the particular lines of code and what they are, but, but like these examples are sort of simple enough to fit in the, you know, slightly smaller version of the right panel of my slide, right? And, that, and that's sort of the interesting thing. We can use these terms and the implementation is not, too long, it's grokkable in a slide. Um, and, and so again, like that's kind of what gives us power is that like the primitives are simple, but the combinations are also like once we get a hang around, uh, once we get the hang of them, we can, you know, run pretty fast. You know, we, you could have workflows as tools. Um, uh, so um, I think, it, it, you know, it's like, hey, like you want to plan location, you want to like check the weather, then you want to plan a trip, maybe these are like, more, more complex workflows, pass that to an agent, let it sort of like iterate and decide. Um, workflows doing agent handoffs, uh, I'm looking at time here, dynamic tool injection. Uh, this is interesting too, I think like, you know, agents um, can start failing if you give them, let's say, double digit numbers of tools and you may wanna th be thoughtful about which tools you're handing, in, handing to a particular agent at a particular time when it's performing a particular task. You can also, um, you know, nested workflows, again, workflow is a step. But again, like the real, and, and just I'm gonna reemphasize this, the real alpha comes from sort of like using these patterns together in the right sort of way. Um, reality has a surprising amount of detail, and so do agentic workflows that um, sort of like, by the time they enter production. Um, I, I think I, I also have a couple minutes for questions, so. Uh, Uh, so the question, the question, yeah, the, the question is, uh, w would it be better to combine the deep research agent? So I, I have a workflow that I know for a fact that it works very well right now, uh -huh. and it's a tool, yeah. it's a purpose, but then I'll take your argument that there's no need to combine them, and just create a new workflow, so, and just... So the, 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 the question is, that your agent works great with 20 tools. I, I would say, like, we are a community of practice more than we are a community of theory. If your agent is working according to what you would need, like, like do it. If it's not theoretically correct, that probably means the theory is wrong, not not the uh, not the practice. 
this is a young field, and the, 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 the practice is evolving faster than the theory, right? I think that's just my general um, comment. Uh, one more question. Uh, you can find me around the conference. You can at, uh, I'm, I'm at CalcSAM, that's C-A-L-C, -C, like calculator and S-A-M, like my name, which is my handle when I was 12, because I was, I, yeah, no, yeah, anyway. Uh, thanks everyone for coming, really appreciate it. Please grab a copy of the book around the conference. Thank you.